welcome back to slow living my name is Esther and in this video I'm going to be dealing with this pair of jeans again this pair of jeans again oh it's my phone in this video I'm going to be repairing my jeans for the second or third time in a previous video I did some hand mending on a few little patches oh gosh there's one there and the big one is here, which you can see has torn <laughs> worse above and below. And if I hold it back here, you can see that this area is very worn and that's exactly where my knee sits. So that's to be expected. I'm pretty proud of my previous mending job. I don't know if you can see. I put in a lot of effort to try and get that mend to really blend in with the jeans. I did these tiny, tiny hand darning stitches, just using um, a needle and thread, not the sewing machine. But I guess I just didn't foresee how worn this area was and that it needed a bit more of a durable, durable mend. Anyway, today I'm going to be mending these again. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing it a different way. So I purchased one of these iron-on mending patches from my local craft homewares store. It's called Spotlight here in Australia. I believe in the States there's Joann's and of course everywhere else in the world there will be different big retail stores but I tried to make this accessible. Accessible? I basically pretended that I was not someone that usually sews and where I would go what I would do if I did have a rip in my jeans. So I ended up at my local Spotlight store, bought the patch and now I'm going to show you how to use it my jeans were hiding in my closet under all of my other clothes of course because I didn't want to wear them with this big rip so I finally got them out and you can see how stretched they are over that knee area they've basically taken the shape of my knee so that area has really stretched out so it's really important to give them a wash at the time I just didn't even think to put on a load of other washing as well having said that my jeans are pretty gross I don't wash them often because that's how you're supposed to care for denim as an aside, this is the washing detergent that I use. It's called Dirt. I'm not sure if they ship worldwide, but here in Australia, they were one of the very first sustainable laundry detergents. Anyway, I'm putting it on a cold wash because that's what I usually do. It's also better for the environment because it uses less power. And I usually just put it on a quick 30 minute cycle. While that's washing, I'm going to head out to Spotlight. Like I mentioned, it's just the closest homewares craft store and it's the most accessible here in Australia. Having said that, I am I'm going to make a few recommendations based on my experience so even if you are a beginner hear me out before you go out and buy anything to mend your jeans or mend your clothes from watching this video I'm making a stop on the way to pick up a coffee ever since COVID happened I got out of the habit of bringing a reusable cup with me so Watching this back, I have now been reminded of how important that is. So I'm going to dig out my reusable cups and start to use them again. So I'm going to walk you through three options and I'll talk you through each one with the pros and cons so that you can decide for yourself which suits. The first option and the easiest and quickest is to buy a ready-made iron-on patch and just slap it on. <laughs> you can get packs with multiple colors and they have a sticky adhesive backing. So once your jeans are washed and completely dried, iron the tear nice and flat and then you're ready to apply the patch. There are really clear instructions on the packet to follow, so you just have to choose how large you would like the patch to be, and you can cut it down if you'd like, and then iron it down. Like I said, this is a super quick option, which is probably the only pro. <laughs> you can iron them to the inside of your jeans if you don't want a square patch showing on the outside. If you do choose to iron the patch to the inside of the jeans though, know that the white underside of the patch will be showing through the tear, since that's the adhesive side. The downside to this quick easy option is that the edges will almost certainly start to peel off because the adhesive isn't super strong. Since this video isn't sponsored, I can be totally honest with the effectiveness of any product I use and I'm probably never going to get sponsored because I'm just way too honest about all these things. So if you go for this option, know that the edges of the patch will start to peel off. The whole thing might not come off, but the edges definitely will start to come up. 
you'll notice that I folded the edges under. So of course the edges of mine are not going to adhere to the jeans, but I can see that the glue itself didn't adhere well in the middle section. So I'm making a judgment call that the edges would start to peel off quite easily, especially after wearing the jeans and washing them. Another downside is that they come in limited sizes, so the small patches definitely would not have covered my tear and I had to buy the large patch which only just fit over the tear. You will need the patch to cover at least a centimetre past the tear all the way around, otherwise it's likely it will just rip again. Yet another downside is that the edges will start to fray. You can see here that they're already fraying and they aren't even on the jeans yet. So after a wash and some wear, you'll definitely start to see some fraying. And lastly, another downside is that they're more expensive than another option that I have for you. The patch I bought cost $5.50, while the multi-packs cost upwards of $7.50. So that's a cost to consider. Now moving on to option two, which still involves using the patch, but overcoming a few of those downsides with a few little details. It is really convenient to use a patch and to be able to iron it down so that it stays in place for the most part, but then for longevity and to prevent fraying, I turned the edges in and hand stitched them down. This does take more time and requires some sewing thread, so that's an extra little cost, but it's quite therapeutic if you take the time to do it. And if you aren't confident with sewing or if you're in a rush, you don't have to do a decorative stitch like I have. You can simply stitch around the outside in a rectangle. I'll take you through some quick instructions for option two. Follow the same steps as option one to apply the patch. That is wash and dry your jeans, iron the torn area flat, Determine what shape and how large you would like your patch to be, ensuring that you cover at least one centimeter extra all around the torn area. And importantly, if you're turning the edges under to prevent fraying in future, you will need another centimeter all around your patch. This brings me back to one of the cons of using a patch, and that is the size limitation. The size of the tear in my jeans meant that I had to orientate my patch horizontally in order to thoroughly cover it. I would have preferred a vertical orientation, but once I turned the edges under to prevent the fraying, the patch was smaller in size and it would not have covered the entire tear, so I had to go with the horizontal way. Once you've cut your patch to size, turn the edges under and use pins to secure it in place. Since denim is quite thick, I then did a basting stitch, which is just a quick running stitch that holds the edges in place while I iron it on, and it allows me to iron without the pins. Once it's ironed on, I'll be unpicking those rough stitches, so you don't have to spend a lot of time on them. You can skip the basting stitches, but you might find it hard to iron the patch with pins, and then the edges won't be folded under as neatly. Follow the packet instructions for applying the patch, and then we will be securing it with some hand sewing, which is the part that prevents the patch from peeling off. So you can either do a really quick basic stitch in a rectangle shape all around the edges of your patch, or you can research into some decorative stitches like I did and have a bit of fun with it. I incorporated the Japanese sashiko method, which is a form of visible mending. It's the idea that we can repair and recreate something that has been damaged into something more unique and even better than before. I really enjoyed this hand sewing process and I'm looking to start on a quilt soon so that I can do more hand sewing over the holidays. You can use any sort of sewing thread you might have lying around and it'll save you having to spend any more. And hopefully you have a sharp needle lying around too, or that you can borrow. Otherwise, you can purchase inexpensive sewing kits at a supermarket, which should come with a needle and some thread. You can also buy whatever color you fancy in cheaper rolls like this through to more expensive brands or different thread types. I used leftover embroidery thread from a previous mend and I chose the contrasting light coloured one so that the stitches would show a bit more against the darker blue denim. Unless you're going for a specific detail or look, the quality of the thread is not really going to make a huge difference in this case, so choose whatever suits your creativity and budget. I will also mention that if you don't mind the edges being frayed, then of course you can leave them raw without folding them under and still stitch around the patch so that it doesn't peel off. I have a few little tips for hand sewing your patch. 
The first is patching the knee area can be tricky because it's really difficult to get your hands in there comfortably to sew. So I recommend cuffing as much as you can so that you have some clear access. Once you get started, you'll get a feel for what works for you. So push through the initial frustration and get into a nice groove. That leads me to the next tip, which is sewing is much more enjoyable when you're not in a rush. So try to do your mending when you have some time to chill out. Next, if you're folding the edges of your patch under, it can be tricky to be precise with your needle and your stitches since it's quite bulky with a few layers of denim to push your needle through. Depending on how neat you're trying to be, try to stay as close to the edge of the patch as you can to prevent that peeling off. And my stitches go over the edge of the patch, but it's totally up to you if you'd like all of your stitches to stay on the patch or if you'd like all your stitches to go on and off like mine. Mine is a bit more decorative, so it's totally up to you. Lastly, don't be tempted to use a really, really long thread because it's highly likely that it'll get knotted and then you'll have to probably cut it off and start again anyway. My thread wasn't that long and it still got knotted, so use roughly 60 centimeters of thread at a time and just tie a knot when you run out and start a fresh one. Once you've, secured, once you've secured your patch onto your jeans, don't forget to unpick the basting stitch that you did previously, if you did them. Now I'm going to come back to the size limitation of the patch, which is still a downside. So our third option is to buy fabric off the roll and cut it to any size that you would like. The advantages of this are obviously that you can buy as much fabric as you need to cover larger tears, and you can also have some leftover for future men's or other projects. There are also some decorative patterns if you'd like to choose a contrasting fabric. Otherwise, you can try to match your jeans or garment with whatever is available. Another advantage is that you can try to find a stretch denim, which I would recommend if the jeans you are mending are stretchy. You can check the content label of your garment and look for stretch fibers such as elastane or lycra. Using a stretchy patch will then give you a little bit more movement than using 100% cotton. Because there's no adhesive, you have the option to put the patch on the inside of your jeans and have the coloured side facing out to make the mend look more subtle. Fabric off the roll is also more economical, I think, since the price per metre can range anywhere from $20 to $40, maybe even cheaper if you go to other stores. So if you're only buying 10 centimetres, it'll cost 10% of the per metre price, obviously. <laughs> the downside to using fabric off the roll is that you have to grab the fabric roll go and line up and have it measured and cut, which only takes slightly longer, but if you're in a huge rush, this obviously adds a little bit of time. And another downside is that you won't have that sticky adhesive backing to help hold down the patch. So you can follow all of the previous steps, except that you'll have to use pins to hold down the patch as you sew it. So overall, I was really pleased with how my jeans turned out. Like I said, it was such an enjoyable hand stitching process and I can't wait to find something else to hand stitch. Mending our clothing is such a wonderful way to keep ourselves busy and to prevent clothing going to landfill. Jeans are one of the most labor and environmentally intensive garments to make from the spinning of cotton, through to the dyeing process and then all of production. So extending the life of jeans is such a great sustainable practice. It also creates a really nice bond with your clothing where it becomes unique to you. Something that can't be simply bought off the rack or from the shops. These are some of my favorite jeans. They're nudie jeans. I bought them on sale. I want to say they were $129. I think they were $129 down from 229 I think their usual retail price is. I won't go too much into how great Nudie is because I think I already did that in a previous video, but um, go and look at their website if you've never heard of Nudie Jeans because they're one of the top brands in sustainability, truly paving the way for what a sustainable wardrobe looks like. They do offer free repairs on all their jeans, I believe. So there we go. I hope that this video was helpful for you. If you hadn't noticed, I'm filming this outro when I'm filming the intro, so I haven't actually done the jeans, but I really hope they turned out great. <laughs>
you can find a bunch of other tutorials on my on my website on my channel if you're interested in mending and alterations or sewing your own clothing I have like a sewing machine guide on there if you'd like to get started in sewing other than that if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up because it supports my channel a passing truck and if you'd like to see more of this type of video subscribe to the channel as I will be uploading weekly ish videos that's my goal and you can also find me on Instagram at slow living that's slow with an e thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video soon bye